ready. All right, Bubba. Uh, Dream, Dream is over there scrapping out. Hold on, I, 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 listen, I got a pan over. The kids Dream is over there getting work done. The kids love him, man. Scrapping he's, with he's the other kids. Kid, man. But first of all, Dream? Dream is three. Dream is three years old. Just turned three in April, so. And he, he loves to be in the he, room. He knows the guy. He, he's been coming in here for about a year and a half now, so. He's, he's one of the guys. Mark Munoz is here, and I, you know, I'm a dad. I'm a, right. I've been a dad for 16 months, man. It's one of the best experiences ever. Absolutely. But so, so <laughs> your kid's getting drug around right now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he's but, a rough house. Okay, but what's the biggest thing if you want your kids to wrestle? Is bringing them around like this probably take the number them one to thing. Take tournaments because I, I take my son to a lot of the high school tournaments because I'm an assistant coach. So I take him to a lot of the high school tournaments, and then when the like little guys are wrestling. I let him sit to at a mat and watch, and he wants to run out so bad. He wants to wrestle so bad. He wants to do what he sees is often is going on. So that's that's a, a, a trick to wanting to get him to wrestle. Because I mean, if if I take him to any tournament, I don't care if it's a college, the trials, whatever. He wants to put on a singlet and wrestle. So that's a good trick to, to get him into wrestling. And you've been a lot of things. You've been world champ. Right. You've been. Uh, a villain, you've been an NCAA <laughs> champ, and, and you've embraced everything you've done right. um, in MMA. You know, you, you made the, the crossover, and you know, I think most people were expecting Bubba J, he's gonna win the UFC title, he's gonna win the Bellator, whatever promotion you're in, right. we were expecting you to win the title. That's some adversity in MMA. How do you handle that adversity? Do you go back to wrestling a lot? Yeah, no, a lot of times it's uh, just like rolling with the punches. I know they say that, and it's a cliche thing, but you gotta roll with the punches. Um, as you get in the MMA, as a lot of the wrestlers have done very well, they've had opportunities and positions to be able to develop as, a, as an MMA fighter without having the pressure of being such great wrestler into MMA. So with that being said, you gotta have uh, an understanding that it's not gonna come all, it's not gonna come right away. It's, you know, you gotta have to, you gotta develop. If you wanna be not just a wrestler in MMA, if you wanna be an actual MMA fighter who, who has a background in wrestling, you gotta develop other gifts and other title and other things while you're slowly learning, but also still fighting you know you're not a lot of times a lot of the good guys get protected sometimes I didn't want to be protected I wanted to, to take what was coming towards me you know what I mean so going out there fighting guys that maybe I can't beat this week maybe I can't beat this year or this month maybe I need to beat this guy in two months but I want to see that I want to test that um, a lot of guys go amateurs I never went amateurs I went straight to the pros I went straight to the big challenges I you know I want I want what's coming to me and I want what I deserve so I just I kind of never really took a back seat I never took the slow lane I was always in the fast lane that's just kind of my, my personality um, I, I can say it has halted my career as far as like being the UFC champion, the Bellator champion, things like that, but I, I like where I am. I love the process that I'm going through and the development that I'm in, so I can't really complain, and I know God marks my path, so I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty content with where I'm at. All right, you coach high school here That's at right. uh, Church Boys, uh, Calvary Chapel, Thunder, Thunder Club with, yep. with Jake Harmon. Um, this is about kids getting recruited, the C3 event, Cliff Fretwell. Um, you didn't need to worry about that. You right. were a freak right, right. out of Virginia, <laughs> like absolute freak. Right. Top two, three recruits in the country. What do you say to a guy who's a step below the Bubba J, right. who, who who needs to get that attention? What do they got to do to get recruited, get a scholarship? And well, you got to be at, you got to be a place like this. You know, you got to go to the camps. You got to go to all the tournaments. I mean, some people now wrestling has become soft in a, in the sense of some people aren't going to certain tournaments because they feel like it will not validate the tournaments that they want or some people are, are skipping tournaments because that's where the tough guys are and they want to play side. You got to be at everything, man. You got to go and try to wrestle at all the big tournaments. Wrestle all the big weight classes. Wrestle all the big names because people jump around weight classes. My generation, my time coming up, we didn't jump or move weight classes. If you were in the tough guy or the returning national champs weight class, that's the weight class you were in. When I was in the Big Ten, when I was in the Big Ten wrestling in national finals, it was me, Metcalf, Torella, Slater, I mean, you can name them, Palmer, I mean. All-time great weight class, by the way, the way you're your runner-up. All-time, all-time. Unreal. Burroughs, I mean, you can name the list, but nobody was ducking, nobody was hiding, no one was going to another weight class and trying to get to an easy weight class. It was like something like 16 All-Americans in that weight, and we saw each other every other weekend. So it was like, to be a national champ that year, which Metcalf was, it was like you had to go to the grind. Burroughs was in that weight, too. Burroughs was in that weight, Caldwell was in that weight. 
Um, I mean, it's incredible. Also, it's a who's who, it was, man. Yeah, it was a big, big turn. And I don't think there was another weight class like it, but it was just, it goes to our mindset of who we were in high school and, and what these kids need to be doing to, to get to that level is, is going out there competing against everyone, getting to see everyone and, and try to wrestle as much as they can. To be at a tournament like this, I mean, to be at a clinic like this, it's awesome. Okay, so being the wrestlers. villain like you were at the Arizona State, you right. know, pinning the magic man like you did, right. it was, first off, unreal, like it was a movie, <laughs> like it's fake and made up, but it happened, right? right? I mean, you were the complete underdog. That story oh, God, it's a crazy, <laughs> movie right. should be made about it, it's a pretty nutty it's thing. Um, but, but looking at it, Bubba, you talk about the wrestling community, you're in the fight community now, right. you're, you're, you're crossing with DJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh -huh. grappling, you know, Muay Thai, all these other different communities, is right. the, and you have to train all those. Yes. And you bring all those people in from those communities. Is there any other community like the wrestling community? None. Um, like you said, I've been in a lot of the, you know, the, the Muay Thai. Boxing has a community. They all have it. Yeah, it, it. There's no, I think a lot of these other sports, they have a, a team camaraderie, more jiu-jitsu like team camaraderie, but it's not like the, the wrestling camaraderie. They don't have duels like we have duels. They don't have to have training partners like we trust in our training partners we have that guy to cut weight with boxing is very very individualistic so muay thai is very well they have a team when they need when they need to go somewhere for them all to train at one particular time but not so much to get each other better not so much to focus on their different techniques wrestling we have different styles there's some guys that are meathead drag them out punch you in the face kind of guys and then there's some guys that are really really slick so to see all that to be able to wrestle and, come, and, and morph to these different types of styles means that you have to be in a team that kind of presents those type of opportunities. So I think our, our community is just small. It's a blue collar, tight knit, tough guy community. I mean, we pride ourselves on being the toughest guys on any campus. You know, that's why wrestling it has that like, we have that look, that ear, that, that, that short, stocky, mean man syndrome kind of thing. And I think it's a testament to our community. Man. We're tight knit, we care for each other. If one guy loses, we can still win as a team. So we're all trying to come together and 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 get that uh that camaraderie that that helps people succeed you know sometimes it ain't just about the guy who's winning sometimes it's about the team that can help you know some of these guys that aren't the best wrestlers get to the next spot you actually wrestled the who's number one didn't you the flow yeah. thing yeah I, wrestled so, like, I think that's that your last thing you wrestled in isn't it like literally as a competitor yeah you know, yeah. so you do events with with flow. You do events. You do, you know, but wrestling's in the rear view. Yeah, absolutely. Have absolutely. they? Has the wrestling community embraced you since villainhood of of 2011? I believe it was. Yeah, right? man, absolutely. I get love everywhere I go. Um, I love. I think you're a great <laughs> dude, man. He's I think. Talk I to. think they. I think they liked me to be the villain because I like to celebrate. I like to have my personality out there. And I think the wrestling community wasn't really ready for like a showman at that time. You know, what I mean, still every now and then when you get a show showman it's still like people want to see him lose because they, they they want you to get your hand raised and walk off the mat I was never that guy I always wore my my um, personality and my heart on my sleeve so if I won a big match you and everyone else was gonna know about we it. knew you those know? ankle bands were getting yeah. shot yeah. we knew those ankle bands were <laughs> gonna be right. like a duck but my friends and family the people who really knew me the people who talked to me every day they knew I wasn't a bad guy they know I just love to have fun you know in practice I love to have fun there's a difference between me playing around and me having fun Fun. There's times where in practice I'll be having fun. I won't be playing around because there's nothing to play with in wrestling. But I'll be having a good time, and that was what kind of got me villainized and me just being me. So I, I loved it. By the way. I'm glad you did. I was that's always all me. about that's it. What, that's what moved me into the sport of MMA. Yeah, yeah the so you can really you, you can, can really embrace it, be a heel if you want you to, talk, and talk trash. trash. You can be a they villain. want that. That promotes the fight. Wrestling didn't have that type of, of niche to the community, which I think would be good if they just kind of accepted that a little bit more. Yeah, it's, it's well, we want to be gracious and Classy. humble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cut your beard off and don't have long hair. <laughs> you know? Get rid of those cornrows. Yeah, that's right. Right. Hey, that's you got right. anything else for me, man? Man, I appreciate you guys coming out and supporting what uh, we got going here at Calvary Chapel and Compound. And man, tune into my fight. It's July 23. You don't even know who you're fighting yet. I, I know heard it's a you victim. say that. I know it's a victim. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know where I'm fighting yet. I do know who. He's got to send me the contract, and I'll send them to his head. But other than that, July 23rd, that's what I'm doing, baby. Hey, Bubba, thanks for the time. No problem, Good luck, man. buddy. No problem.